welcome to my take on Gran Turismo Sport. I call it the anti Gran Turismo. Um, it flies in the face of everything we know is what Gran Turismo has been in the past. Uh, and we'll start with the graphics here on the main menu. They go showing you these incredible scenes of cars uh, mixed in with some museum pieces. Uh, I'm on a 4K HDR TV with the PS4 Pro and it's pornographic. The graphics are absolutely incredible as we always expect from from polyphony. Uh, lighting is incredible. It's no surprise here. The presentation is very nice. Um, now it's got a big focus on online racing. That's the big difference here. The Sunday Cup is gone. The grinding is gone. The upgrades are gone. Uh, the car counts lower. The track list is lower. Uh, but while we're looking at the options, uh, they're going towards a big social push for, uh, you know, kind of just being a race car driver. They want you to experience how fun it is to race. They've put all of their eggs in that basket, and we'll see here if it works or not. Uh, I like the game. Uh, it has a lot going for it, but it could be a good big failure. Um, well, here, there's a couple interesting things besides the online portion that this game offers. Uh, one is the delivery editor. I'm showing right now a car that I made from the delivery editor. It's like a National Guard car from Argentina. Um, you know, I know a lot of a lot of people aren't into this stuff. I, I didn't think I was going to be into it either until I saw how really incredible um, and incredibly powerful the livery editor is and um, the detail you can get on these cars is absolutely amazing and in most of the online races you can use them uh, so it's really nice to be able to set yourself apart with something make your own design you know this is a safety car this will probably never be raced but uh, I was just messing around with it um, and yeah you can see this was all done by hand the decal uploader is in beta right now. It should be released in a few days. Uh, but uh, I mean, just look at the license plate. the The amount of detail I was gonna, I was able to get into the license plate is pretty incredible. Uh, you know, just another testament to how Polyphony Digital are true graphical wizards. I'm on a Logitech G29 steering wheel with the optional uh, stick shift and one big issue with the options is you cannot calibrate the wheel or the pedals at all it's uh, it's really annoying it's something that's been in the history of, of GT games and they haven't fixed it yet and that's uh, you know the first big critical thing I have to say about it and um, here we're looking at the mileage mileage exchange the more you race per day the more you race in general you get mileage points you can exchange them there for for different things and and yeah here are some more of the social features uh, the scapes photos we'll get the scapes in a second scapes is another feature that i thought i wouldn't even bother with but i found i'm really enjoying uh, but yeah, here's where you can look at your own and other people's trending, latest, everything, uh, pictures, scapes, replays, uh, decals that people have uploaded to the livery editor. Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty integrated as far as uh, you know the play players go and everything. One thing I gotta mention right now, there is no offline save. If you do not have an internet connection, uh, you're not gonna be able to do anything in the game. That's been a big turnoff for a lot of people. Um, and here's the track lists. Here's another big criticism I have for the tracks. Um, I think there's only like five real ones and like 12 in total. And the fantasy tracks aren't even the ones that we're used to. You know, all the classics are gone. Um, this is something they definitely have to improve. It's a pretty sparse track list. Uh, supposedly they'll be adding some more for free. Uh, so we'll hope that's true. There you're looking at campaign mode with the three different options. There's a series of events in there that you can take part of. Uh, pales in comparison to campaign modes in previous GTs. Um, now look at the 
the sport mode. This is the bread and butter of Gran Turismo Sport. This is where you have daily races. There's always three for now. There's a one make race where the car is fixed. So everyone's got the same car. Um, and then you've got the group four, which is the equivalent of the real life GT4. And then you got the group three, which is the equivalent of the real life GT3. And you've got the start times. You can get in, you can practice a little bit, and then, uh, you know, it'll match you with whoever is supposedly uh, pretty much at your level. Now, here's something interesting that's going on right now. This is a trial championship of the FIA Nations Cup and the FIA Manufacturer Series. The Nations Cup is um, by, by region, which is determined by your PSN account. And the manufacturer season, you sign up for a manufacturer and you're binded to that manufacturer for the season. There's a six. A, this calendar has changed since, but there's six or seven, seven races. And you get points according to how you finish relative to other people at your level. The higher level you are, the more points you get. So if you're one of the slower guys in the slower classes, you're not going to be getting anywhere in this. But that said, and we'll see the racing later, um, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's really great. And it's nice to see, finally, um, a racing game bringing what a lot of people like about iRacing on the PC to console, where you can just jump in any time of the day in the normal sport mode and race against people who are pretty much at your level. Um, here we're looking at online lobbies. There, you're also able to make lobbies. Uh, you know, they can be public or private. You can invite your friends. You can set up all. Uh, you can set them up where, however you want. So that's a nice thing that they've continued because uh, they tend to have uh, the GTs tend to have very nice lobby options. Now here's the scapes. In the scapes, you basically just pick a, a photograph. These are 4K pictures that have all of the lighting sources coded into them so you can put up to three cars into them and you position them wherever you want it could be one two or three cars you have a whole bunch of options to turn the wheels to put the driver in there you can turn the lights on you can have the brake lights on um, and there's a lot of photography options as well photographers will absolutely love this it's just like a real camera and for people who aren't photographers well this might be a good chance to just get into it i didn't think i would ever even look at this mode but i'm really enjoying taking pictures um especially of the cars that i've designed it's a uh, unexpected surprise and something that gives a little bit of value to a game that being online focused really needs some extra value to it given the fact that most online centric games these days are free to play so I guess another criticism could be the low car count there's about 150 cars but they're not all unique you've got a lot of they're not exact duplicates but you've got duplicates among different classes like for example you've got the Subaru WRX STI road car and the GT4 car and the GT3 car so they're not really 150 unique cars but uh, you know supposedly they're gonna be adding a lot more cars in the future as well let's hope that's true so now it's time to jump into a single race and we'll look at the physics um, we'll just jump into the Nürburgring 24 hours with some some AI cars um, and to show some of the big flaws in the physics, I'd like to pick a, one of the road cars, especially rear-wheel drive. So we'll take this Toyota 86. And this is classic GT physics-wise. Uh, it won't be a surprise to anyone who's played GT before. It's a bit of a disappointment that Polyphony does not take their physics model to the next level after 20 years of making games. Um, I'm of the opinion that Gran Turismo has always had a very good dynamic handling model. The dynamics of the car. I like to separate dynamics and physics. Dynamics is how you feel the weight of the car and, and what the car is doing when you're under braking, when you're accelerating. 
GT's always excelled in vehicle dynamics. The cars just kind of do what you think they would do. So they're pretty intuitive. Uh, that hasn't changed a bit. And the physics, yeah, the physics continues being subpar, especially now that there's uh, some pretty hefty competition with Assetto Corsa and Project Cars 2. Um, here's another criticism I have, the cockpit view. There's no way to edit the HUD at all except for just turning stuff off. It's extremely convoluted. You've got the the race standings blocking the mirrors. Uh, you've got all of this duplicate information down there below the dials. And another thing, um, cockpit views are really immersive and everything, but they're not very realistic. Anyone who's not playing on a triple screen or a VR setup, you're you're kind of not doing yourself a favor with a cockpit view. You're totally limiting your field of view. Um, you're blocking a little bit more of your peripheral vision, which is already um, at a minimum on a flat screen TV. And so I don't use it. I wish they had you know some more dash cam options or something like the the dash cam in a set of course or the dash cam in dirt rally or the options that project cars have to get you really close to the windshield and uh, i would love that so the, you know i mean my go-to view in gran turismo is still the bumper cam in spite of the fact that you feel like you're kind of floating in the air um now here we'll just look at something really weird in the physics okay I, you can see that changing from first gear to second gear in this car with traction control off it just takes forever so here's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna try it with the clutch and the stick shifter um, so yeah having trouble getting it into gear Gran Turismo has always had a problem with clutch implementation they've always had a problem with gear shift implementation it hasn't changed I don't know why they don't get their act together with this but here, there I am. I'm just trying to change gears, and it's like the the clutch pedal is like some on-off switch. So you have to fully depress it and and switch, and then hit the gas. And it's like if you hit the gas dur during your shift, it won't work either. Uh, this is something they have to fix. It, it's really inexcusable this day and age to not having a, have a working clutch model. And so, well, here's another thing that's really weird about the physics. Let's just uh, let's roll backwards downhill right uh first gear sixth gear fifth gear whatever you want the car just keeps going now i, I get on the gas right get on the gas let's put in yeah third gear on the gas full on the gas and the car's not doing anything nothing so there now i start accelerating and here we go with another standing start this is another issue with the Gran Turismo and I think it has something to do with the tire model and it's really hard to step the back end of a, a car out when on a standing start and I think it's no coincidence that there has been no online match yet three weeks after release that actually has a standing start because Polyphony knows that there is something so wrong with their tire model that it would just be a laughing stock having a standing start with these cars sitting there and you know just squealing their tires and not even having the rear end step out now that said uh, we can continue on with the, the tire model I've already mentioned that the vehicle dynamics in Gran Turismo are good as they always been good the cars are intuitive they behave like like they think think you would however with the very simplified physics and very simplified tire model um, Gran Turismo it has very little simulation value and here's something that just you can tell right there I just turned traction control all the way up and the change from the first to the second gear was about four times faster that just makes no sense and and yeah the tire model is extremely extremely simplified uh, it's actually believed by many and myself to be a linear tire model whereas real tire models should be not be linear they should be something closer to parabolic where you have a gradual or sudden a losses or increases of grip it, it it's linear it's uh you know 
maybe they've done it just to make it a little bit more accessible for people. Gran Turismo is a little bit easier to handle than other games. And like I mentioned before, here your cockpit view adjustments is pretty pathetic. Up and down, front and back, they're, they're almost useless. Um, we really need a, an FOV switch, a wide and narrow, and be able to get closer to the dash. But uh, so yeah, this simplified tire model, you know, there's you got to take Gran Turismo for what it is. It's it's always been trying to do the same thing with their physics and the tire model, and you know, I'll criticize it, and I'll criticize it a lot, but you got to take Gran Turismo for what it is and what it's trying to do right here in this game. And right now we're going to take a look at why um, pretty much anyone can, no matter how hardcore they think they are, you can just overlook the lack of simulation value um, and just enjoy the vehicle dynamics and get into races like this. Um, the races are surprisingly clean. They're surprisingly close. They're incredibly entertaining. Uh, I've never had an experience like this in console ever, where at any time of the day you just jump into one of the sport races. It'll match you with some people that are pretty close to your skill level and very close to your safety level. And the matchmaker will set it up so that you have the best possibility of uh, having fun. Uh, it's in spite of the past GT games being bumper cars with the AI, I'm surprised to see that the vast majority of drivers are very clean. There's some really close racing. There's some side-by-side -side action, sometimes three wide. Everyone, in general, is very respectful. Um, then, you know, you've got things like this where you've got, you know, cars where it's just, you know, here I'm in third place, and it's just, it was, the whole race was it a train of us three one two three almost bumper to bumper and no one really able to to get away that much this is you know something i know if you've participated in in racing leagues this is something that doesn't happen you usually end up with you know one two three guys going off in the distance and three guys uh, getting lapped five times and then you know the rest of us in the middle uh you know the difference here is if you're one of those guys that's always in the middle you're all one of the guys that's always in the back uh, you're still gonna have people to race with and you know for you aliens out there you're gonna be grouped with the aliens you're always gonna have uh, a, you know someone to race with that's pretty much near your skill level it, it's really well done so what polyphony digital is has created here you know I wouldn't even call it a game I wouldn't call it a racing game I wouldn't call it a racing sim what they've put together is a platform for online automobile competitions um, and that is where this game shines this is what makes Gran Turismo Sport really special there is not an experience anywhere near this on console uh, there's pretty high player accounts for now hope it stays that way and um, it's quite clean there's virtually no lag and and you know do I have some criticisms for this system? Yes, of course I do. It's region locked. So the Americas are with the Americas and Europe and Middle East is with Europe and the Middle East and the Far East and, uh, and Australia and New Zealand are with the Far East and Australia and New Zealand. Um, there are times of day where you can tell there are low player counts because you'll be matched with a couple people a couple levels above you and a couple people a couple levels below you. Um, I think they need to get rid of the region lock and move more towards an IP detection scheme, but, uh, you know, for now it works, and as long as there's players, well, the game will work. Uh, but while we're on that subject, um, let's get to what could turn this game into a huge failure. First of all, I don't think this game is worth a AAA $60 price tag. In this day and age, games that focus on online, things like World of Tanks, um, they're free to play and they also don't require a PlayStation Plus subscription. There have to be, there has to be people playing this for this to be successful. 
So the first thing they needed to do is drop the price. I, I really don't think this game is worth $60, except for the hardcore G F D GT fans. And I would say 30 40 would be a good entry point, maybe to drop down to a steady 20 within, you know, six months. And I think that would be enough to get a lot of people on board. The only reason I'm saying it's worth money at all is because of the scapes and the livery editor. That's something you just don't get anywhere. Okay, so right there we saw an exception to the clean racing rule. This was uh, one of the FIA championship races that, for some reason, had a huge spread in driver rating. And that guy was just, like, getting lapped for, like, the third time. And he, he didn't seem like he was doing it on purpose. He just had no idea what he was doing. He shouldn't have been in this race. This is the things that can happen in matchmaking sometimes when there's just not enough people playing. And this is where Gran Turismo can be a huge failure. They need people playing. They have to do everything in their power to keep people playing this. That's why I'm talking about dropping the price. And that is why them adding more tracks and more cars for free is extremely important. You look at stuff like World Tanks. It's seven years old on the PC. It's four years old on the Xbox. And it's two years old on PlayStation. And people still play it like crazy. Because it's free and they don't need a subscription to do it. Uh, Gran Turismo, I think, needs the same thing. For now, it's doing okay. Because I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's selling pretty well. And a lot of people are playing it. But there are times of the day where uh, you will have some odd matchups. You'll have a lot of... Uh, you know disparity between between players but you know as you're looking at these racing videos you know you can tell that you know there's a lot of close racing going on there's a lot of uh, clean racing going on um, it's really an incredible experience it's unlike anything I've ever experienced on console and that is what is wonderful about this game this platform that they have designed for close clean human competition in automobile racing. I think Polyphony has really, really um, done something very special here and I hope they give it the love that it needs so that it can continue to grow as an eSport. Uh, anyone who is into online racing, whether you have issues with the physics or not, I think you'll really love this game. Now, the old GT stalwarts, the nostalgics that love their Sunday Cups and love their grinds and love their 700 cars. Yeah, you know what? There's not much here for you. This is a totally different ball game. Um, it's just different. Uh, Forza 7 is your alternative to Gran Turismo now. I'm sorry to say it, but that Gran Turismo, at least for now, it's gone. Uh, this is what you're looking at is Gran Turismo right now. I personally love the change in the series. I think this is what the series needed. I think this is what racing needed on consoles. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people that will not agree with me. And you are completely in the right to disagree with me. You know, Gran Turismo has lost something, but it's also gained something. It's just different. So, uh, like to mention the sounds, um, tire squeal is still a little bit annoying, but it is important in this game because there's the, the feedback on the steering wheel is a little numb, and braking is still kind of ridiculously numb in this series. You just you don't have any idea when the car is locking up or what it's doing. So the tire squeal, despite being annoying, it, it, it is very informative, and it's a necessary evil in Gran Turismo. I would have liked a little more simulation value. Uh, you know, the game the game lacks in simulation value, but the the vehicle dynamics are, are, are more than enough to make the driving experience enjoyable. It's not as immersive or visceral as something like Project Cars or, or Assetto Corsa, but what this game offers, those those two games will never be able to offer. I know that Project Cars 2 has implemented this, uh, this rating system and everything, but they have nothing like a matchmaking system or a championship system, online championship system, in like the FIA championships that Gran Turismo Sport has. Uh, th there's really nothing like this. Um, what Gran Turismo Sport is trying to do 
is providing an accessible yet somewhat realistic driving mod uh, model uh, to the most amount of people possible on an online racing platform that takes care of matchmaking so that you just jump in and have fun and it's really working and it, it's it, I, I don't know I, I can't praise it enough and I really hope that Polyphony uh, takes care of this game because they got something special going on uh, there's no dynamic time there's no dynamic weather uh, sometimes uh, these days with games being so complex it's probably a blessing in disguise I think because it just prevents those things from interfering and causing weird bugs and inconsistencies in the physics and the vehicle dynamics so we're looking at a game that is not trying to do a whole lot but what it is doing it's doing very well I highly suggest picking it up for any racing car fan and I think pretty much anyone who, who loves cars and loves driving is going to love this you got to take the physics with a grain of salt you got to overlook the short track list you have to overlook the car count you have to look at what this game is trying to do and that is completely different than anything else out there you will not find anything like this anywhere out there if you're into online racing you would be totally retarded not to pick this up if you're not into online racing well man I'm sorry but I think it might be fours a seven time anyway thanks for watching everyone until next time bye bye